And what's going on guys? Happy Friday to all y'all. I hope most of you guys are able to go fishing. If not, well, maybe take an early lunch. But uh, right now I am in Galveston. I am in Galveston. I am out in the middle of West Bay and I am trying to look for some speckled trout. Maybe you guys can help me a little bit and help me find some because I've been looking high and low and um, there have been some blow ups here and there, but uh, I was a little bit successful to say. What's up, man? Welcome in. Welcome in, gentlemen. Welcome in. What's going on, guys? Welcome in. Howdy, howdy. Like I said, I am in the middle of West Bay. I am in Galveston, my, our home waters, to the majority of you guys. What's up, guys? Welcome. Um, just trying to look for some speckled trout. Just floating along, drifting. It's a beautiful day with low winds. I hope you guys are able to come out and fish too. But uh, winds, yeah, how are the winds today? I think uh, it's like seven, eight miles per hour. So it is really, really nice. So um, how many of you guys are working right now? I better not hear that you guys are participating. Oh my God, sorry, false alarm. My popping cord just went down. <laughs> how many of you guys are working right now and um, watching this live stream because if you are I am fairly disappointed that you are using company resources to watch my live stream but at the same time I'm very happy that you guys are here <laughs> and I hope you guys are staying safe like I said right now I'm in the middle of West Bay it's beautiful out here the winds are very low and I am trying to look for some speckled trout around this drop off around this island we're gonna see what happens. Just using, check it out. Got my spinning reel, my old 18 suppressor. This is the uh, this is the light action, a light action rod, and I am using a popping cork right here, popping cork with white live or live white gulp shrimp with a 1 8 ounce swim hook, and I am just popping it around, trying to see if I can get a bite maybe i can catch a fish hopefully on a live stream it's never been done before in the history of my channel and maybe i just didn't jinx it hopefully not we'll see oh what's up sloshy joe two dollars man thank you my man thank you so much for the generous support man i am really really lucky to have um subscribers like you guys let's see here um there's not any croakers unfortunately I did get some live shrimp, believe it or not, guys. I had some live shrimp. You know me, I really don't use live shrimp, but today I was using live shrimp and I was semi successful, let's say the least, but I ran out. I didn't actually ran out. I gave it to my buddy who's back there fishing with me. He wanted some live shrimp because he wasn't catching anything on the gulp. And ironically, I am using gulp now. <laughs> oh gosh, the things I do to fish, man. I'm telling you what, guys. But, uh oh, oh my gosh, oh, we had a fish, dude. What the heck? You stupid. I bet you it was a freaking catfish, man. Do catfish eat gulp? Do catfish eat? Someone answer me that because I don't know. I don't really use gulp and I try not to catch catfish. <laughs> Do catfish eat gulp? Yep, yes, okay. Well, that might have been catfish, but y'all heard it, right? Y'all heard the clicking? It went down under. <laughs> I'm not joking either. So what's been going on, guys? Let's see. I see a lot of messages coming in. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm trying to. Uh oh, there it goes again. Hold on, guys. Something is messing with my stupid popping cork. Well, if you're going to eat it, man, just eat it. What are you doing? Stop playing with my emotions. I think it is a freaking gaff top or catfish. There's plenty of them out here in West Bay. And um, man, isn't there a, a CCA tournament uh, for biggest gaff top? <laughs> right? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I don't really keep, keep up with that. Isn't there a, like a, um, a prize if you get the biggest gaff top? So I guess uh, catching gaff top is not all a loss. I'm being serious. All right, you're out on the 61st pier. Nice, man. The water looks great, dude. I mean, it's not as 
clean as I want it to be, but you know, that's Galveston for you. Uh, who else is fishing? Let me know. Let me know who else is fishing, gentlemen. I'm trying to catch a fish on a live stream, which has never happened before. Let me move out of the way here. There's some waders to my left, so I'm gonna get out of their way. Even though we're about 80 yards away from them, we don't wanna be in their line of sight, so let's get out of the way here. Give me a sec, guys. So, yeah, okay, they're yeah, good. I'm at least five casts away from them. Five cast distance. What's up, man? What's going on? Fishing in Dallas, all right, my man. That's what I'm talking about. You are fishing and you're participating in this live stream. I really do appreciate that, I really do. Let me, sorry, let me get this. All right, is that more intimate? How's that? So I can kind of be better see the comments because I can't see the comments, it's so bright out here. Hey Nick, love your channel. Thanks James, thanks my man. I really do appreciate that. One thing I don't like though is I don't like wind knots in my spinning reel. How do you guys prevent wind knots from happening? Because eventually they happen, especially when I use really thin light braid. How, how, how do you guys do it? Let, educate me, please. I'm <laughs> feeling intimate, yeah. <laughs> me too, guys. I'm feeling intimate. <laughs> so I need to know, man. Someone please tell me, how do you guys prevent line twist in your braided line when you're using a spinning setup because right here is my line twist and it's like annoying me i really don't like it pack it as tight as possible man i i did bro i packed it at least three or four times on this reel and it's uh every now and then i'll get a line twist and it really makes me mad swivel yeah i guess a swivel would probably make the most sense to help prevent all that uh twisting from the popping cork because i use the spinning reel this one mostly for a popping cork and that that thing does twist in the air no doubt about that you get a boat and motor and trailer for the biggest gaff top dude any of you guys uh, specialize in gaff top catching? Let me know. Hit me up, man. Hit me up. I will go out with you because I want to try to win a truck catching the biggest gaff top. That'd be the funniest video ever. Winner wins the winner wins a truck from biggest catfish. I don't know, man. I would. Uh, I wonder how many thumbs down that would get. <laughs> oh, let's see here. All right, how's that, guys? There we go. So yeah, um, I'm trying to catch some speckled trout. The bite was good earlier. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. The bite was really good. Um, like I said, I was using some live shrimp. I was using top water in the morning. The bite was really good. Um, but it just, it's died down. This is slack tide right now. So you know, it is what it is. There's supposed to be be, be a big tide movement later on today, which actually would really make fishing, I believe, a lot of fun. So I hope you guys are able to get out today especially at late afternoons. Isn't tomorrow National Fishing Day? Someone told me tomorrow is National Fishing Day. Is that true, guys? Let me know. It's, it, what is National Fishing Day? I've never heard of that before. It's probably something I need to really pay attention to. Is tomorrow National Fishing Day? Yes, it is. What is, who made that up? That's a weird, that's a funny, I, that's the first time I've ever heard of National Fishing Day. I've never heard of that before, honestly. Oh, no fishing permit needed. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. I guess another another reason to go drink. <laughs> no license needed in the state. Is that a federal thing or is that a state thing? Is that only in Texas or is that like, God dang it, stupid freaking. Is that only in Texas or is that like also in um, all over the states? Everyday National Fishing Day. I don't know about that, man. I think you need a license for the uh, other days that are not National Fishing Day. State, okay. Fishing and sh is drinking. Yes, amen to that. Although I, I, I didn't bring uh, an adult beverage, but I have my Yeti right here, full of ice water, which I will take a swig. Make sure you stay hydrated out there. Ah. 
I don't know about you, man. I know a lot of guys would disagree with me, but I absolutely love Yeti products, man. I know they're expensive and all, but God, I've never had one break on me or anything, and my spinning wheel just took a dump. Oh, God. All right, guys. This is getting kind of annoying. So I think we're going to put this... We're going to put this gulp up because we keep getting thicker and thicker line twists and I need to redo it at home again. Oh God, that's one thing I do not like about spinning reel setups is the potential line twist using braid. It's, it's really, it sucks, man. So we're going to put this one up in here. And I got the good old bait cast with the trout thumper and the saucy swimmer on the end, just like that right there. So I'm gonna to toss that around. How many of you guys here prefer bait casts over spinning? How many of you guys prefer that? Use mono on the spin cast. Yeah, that's, that's what people have told me, but I just still prefer braid. I mean, I'm just, I've been using braid all my life pretty much. And I just don't really like mono or fluoro as my main line. I've had issues in the past, I'm just not used to it. But back to the question, who here prefers a bait cast over a spinning? Bait cast for fresh water and spinning for salt. Okay, why? Why do you do that? I wanna hear your, I wanna hear your reasoning on why you prefer a bait cast for fresh and spinning for salt water. Bait cast. Let me hear your reasoning because I'm actually pretty interested. For me, honestly, what's up, Ray? You're leaving? All right, later, man. Talk to you later. Uh, reason why, reason for me, I like using uh, bait cast is because I'm more accurate and it's faster, especially when you're fishing the marsh. Uh, that's the type of fishing I do mostly, right? On the kayak in the marsh, and you have to be able to uh, be accurate and fast and cast a trillion times and casting a trillion times on a spinning reel versus a big cast setup is a it's a night and day difference i'm telling you what and um honestly i only use spinning rods when the lure is absolutely like featherweight meaning it's like 132nd ounce or even lighter um i think a spinning spinning setup with an ultralight rod is more appropriate for that super ultralight type type of tackle and then uh another time i use a spinning is when i'm on a jetty and i have a big rod and i'm casting big spoons and the other time is when i'm using a a popping cork or a um whatchamacallit a uh, a slip cork on the jetty so those are the only times I really use a spinning rod. Most of the other time I will use a bait cast like this right here, bait cast setup. And I seem to enjoy a bait cast better because as I said before, the type of fishing I like to do in the marsh is, it's pretty quick, man. We're always moving, man. There's really not a time when you're just kind of sitting in one spot unless maybe you're working a top water, which I like to use a bait cast in the top water or, um, you're working a channel or drop off for a few minutes, fishing the bottom. That's the only time I kind of sit. But other than that, I'm always constantly moving. So, yeah, that's 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 my story. So hold on, guys. Hold on, all right. Let me see. There's something wrong. Okay, there's nothing wrong. It's like I can't freaking see. It's like so bright out here. I can't see. I apologize guys, I'm not ignoring your comments, it's hard to see. Am I still in Baffin? No. Shimano all the way, okay. Is a flounder bite any good this time of year? Um, I mean, they're biting, but they're not going to be as aggressive as, say, the flounder run. <laughs> David, <laughs> sneaking in at work. Oops, here comes a boss. <laughs> Don't get in trouble. Let's see here. Spinning for winning day. Wind, windy days. I agree with you. Okay, so I think I'm caught up. I apologize, guys. When is the run? I'm assuming you, you mean the fun the run. That's like November. Shoot.
shoot. Someone, someone, kid, someone, just someone chime in. When is the flounder one? Like November through December, but I'm not specific on what dates. Someone tell me, please. Caught three keeper flounder yesterday. Dude, that's awesome, man. It's been a, um, it's been a few days since I caught a keeper flounder and I am itching to catch another flounder soon. So hopefully, hopefully. All right, we're, we're kind of verging up to the island here, which I don't really want to, I kind of want to fish the outer skirts of the island to drop off. So I'm going to turn back around here. Give me a sec. Maybe I'll be able to see you better too if I turn around. Okay, that's a little better. <laughs> I kind of feel like I am fishing, watching your live stream, LOL. Yeah, that's the point, man. I, I, uh, I'm kind of doing it. I started doing these live streams uh, while I fish so I can kind of show you guys the beautiful scenery. Perhaps maybe you're stressed at work. It was a hard work week or something. Maybe this will kind of brighten your day. I don't know. I'm being kind of corny, but, uh, you know, just kind of trying to look after you guys here, if that makes any sense. Uh, I just need to catch a fish, man. The bite has completely died down, I'll be honest with you. It was pretty good earlier, but we're at a slack tide right now, and the tide should be falling within a couple hours, so that's when I think the, the, the bite has will turn back on. I've kind of learned to really recognize tides lately. Before, I never, honestly, as long as I've been fishing, I've never really paid attention to tides unless I was wade fishing, and then I needed to know if the water's gonna be too deep above my chest or something, then I would pay attention to the, uh, the tide. But uh, lately I have been, especially on a kayak, because I've noticed, I've noticed there's actually, oh my gosh, look at these big old mullet right here. I've noticed that there is, it does make a difference, man. I know you guys are like, no shit, Sherlock. But, uh, you know, I learn something every day. <laughs> Do I get cramps on a kayak? No, I don't think I've... Oh, you know what? I have one time. I got a bad leg, leg cramp on a kayak. This was back, way back a couple years ago when we were fishing in Baytown. And uh, we were going down the Trinity River. And oh my God, we were going against, against the tide. And the tide was moving like ferociously. So, I mean, I was pedaling my heart out. I mean, I could only eke out like 0 0.3 miles per hour. And it was like a three mile, close to a three mile trek. And by the time it was three quarters of the way over with, I had a bad cramp and it set me back another mile. So that was probably one of the worst. That was, I never want to do that again. That was, uh, <laughs> I would have been better off if someone shot me. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But that, yeah, that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. But yeah, man, what's been going on with you guys? Hope everyone's doing well. What are y'all's fishing plans for this week? Everyone staying in town? Hey Nick, love the channel. Thanks man, I, I appreciate it. I should come down to Sabine and catch some trout on top water with you. Yeah, I've been to Sabine. Sabine is a, a really nice place to fish, man. Uh, plan to go there hopefully soon. We'll see what's up. Yaks behind me. Yeah, Slick Rick. There's a couple of guys uh, that parked their yaks and they're waiting that way, wade fishing that way. They did pretty good. Um, I think they were using live bait just like I was. Everyone was doing pretty good here. So um, this is a very highly pressured area. This, this, this spot ain't no secret, man. This is like middle West Bay. Boaters, kayakers, wade fishermen, everyone knows this area. So, but yeah. Texas City today from 2 to 12, yes. And tomorrow, I'm going to pack it up to head to Lake Livingston. Dude, that sounds like an awesome plan. You got the salt water, and then you got the fresh water, getting some largemouth bass. 
that, my friend, sounds like a good plan. That looks like Port Mansville. <laughs> nah, man, it's not Port Mansville. Although Port Mansville is on the, the agenda, hopefully one day, to visit on the Texas Fishing Travel Series. How do you guys like that series so far? Y'all like it? Let me know. Is it something that I need to continue or do I need to stop? Yes, 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 continue. Okay, keep at it. All right, um, if you guys seem to like it. So here's the, uh, here's the point of doing all these Texas fishing travels, okay? You probably, you guys have probably already heard the subtle hints in my videos if you've seen the whole video, but uh, I'm not really there to, fishing is not the main priority. You know what I mean? So what I really want to do is I just want to bring out, I mean, fishing, of course, is the big part of it, but it's not the main part. It's the experience of traveling down to a, a new, you know, new area along the coast and just trying to record, or video record rather, um, the beauty. What's special about the area, the landscape, the wildlife. Um, and then fishing comes second. If I'm able to catch fish, great. If not, then, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, these are brand new. Every, every area that I've chosen so far, I have never been to. So um, it's kind of like, you know, an experience for me, a new experience for me. Like I'm trying to learn about that area. Um, I'll do all my research before I leave. Uh, look, at, look at Google Maps for launch spots and stuff like that. And then just try to, you know, just portray what I, what I think is important about that area that makes does that make sense so you know if you guys ever decide to go visit a certain place that i visited uh, you kind of know what to expect and uh, the scenery especially if you want to go fish uh, what to expect there and um, maybe the type of fish that i catch uh, the techniques that i'm using to catch them whatever the case may be but fishing is it's, it comes secondary number one is exploration and just taking in all the beauty of um, that area that I'm visiting for you know the travel series so that, that's the main point really um, but yeah of course fishing is 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 very important but I you know I want to emphasize it's, it's not it's not the main important thing um, main important thing is just to really show what Texas is all about man this is a badass state man this is our hometown or not hometown our home state uh, everyone has a lot of, if you're a Texan Born and raised in Texas, you have a lot of pride. And Texas is so big, a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us have never ventured out the city of Houston. Or I haven't even gone past San Antonio or Austin or Dallas. Um, you know, so that's 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 kind of my plan is to really touch base with people to let them know what's what's out there, man, besides Galveston. I mean, Galveston is great, Galveston is beautiful too. It's uh it has its own own beauties to it, it's along with Freeport and Sargent, Brazoria, my home waters. Um, but there's so much Texas coast, man. You know what I mean? I mean Laguna, Laguna Madre. I mean every every avid angler has heard about the Laguna Madre. So, but not every every avid angler has visited there, especially um, you know the bank fishermen, the weight fishermen, or the kayakers. They've never visited there, so you know. That's what I'm trying to educate and show you what it's all about. I hope I didn't ramble, man. I know I talked a lot. Sorry, guys. Hook them. Hell yeah, hook them horns. Did I get any hogs lately? No, I haven't gone hog hunting, but I need to. All right. Best bugs for flounder. Man, I would say the best bugs for flounder is probably going to be the trout thumper. Uh, next would probably be, I would say the hothead. Hothead and third would, would come probably clickbait. Clickbait and, oh, you know, no, let me, sorry, let me reorganize that. Trout, I mean, uh, curl tail number one, number two, hothead, number three, flats bug, number four, uh, your clickbait and number five 
probably like a paddle tail type like trout thumper or a uh, hydro bug in those order that's in my opinion i think those are the uh best for flounder with bugs ray says clickbait for past two months been killing it i know ray man i've been seeing your pictures man you are you're doing really well man i wish i can do well as you <laughs> All right, man. Take it easy, James. Love the fresh fish cooking parts as well. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, but it's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. It is a lot of work to produce that type of video. It's mostly luck, Nick. <laughs> no, man. If you're able to catch fish with uh, the lure that you're using, I mean, it has to do with uh, skill too, because you got to work that lure to make it look alive. Jim, you do tedious work under a microscope, so you appreciate the live stream on the water. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. That's that's why I do it to try to brighten your your, your guys your guys' days. Does that make sense? Brighten your days and hopefully give you a different perspective instead of working in that little cubicle or that corner office or whatever that uh, you're able to really hopefully hear the sounds of the outdoors and what I'm experiencing through my eyes. It looks like my buddy caught another fish. Yep, he's doing well on the speckled trout. He's using the live shrimp. I had a uh, leftover live shrimp I gave to him. Thanks, Mar who is this? Thanks, Marv, I appreciate it. Merv, thanks, Merv, I appreciate that. Robert says, talking is good for the soul. Well, uh, you should really tell that to my wife because she thinks I talk too much. I like Matagorda, Port O'Connor, Texas. Yeah, that's, that's a nice area too, man. I've been there many times. Matagorda, Port O'Connor, uh, very beautiful place to fish. Great content. Keep it up. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all you guys that watch the videos, man. It really makes my day. <laughs> Your wife thinks you talk too much, too? Yeah. Something with women and talking. I have no idea. It's funny because isn't it a stereotype where um, women love to talk on the phone and stuff like that, but guys don't? But I don't know, man. That might be a stereotype. Yeah, man, there have been no blow-ups, nothing. I was using a gulp early. I had a couple of hits. I think it was like gaff top, and uh, I missed them, unfortunately. There is a lot of jellyfish out here, guys. Let me show you. So if you come out wade, be careful. There's tons of jellyfish. Gosh, there's one right here. Dang, that's a big one. I don't want to pick it up because I don't want them to sting me. So be careful. If you guys come out and wade fish, make sure you be careful, okay? Come on, fish. Come on. Give me a fish so these guys can see. Please. One fish. I don't care if it's a catfish. Just one fish. So these guys can see something on video. Come on, man. Am I going to ICAST this year? Yes, I plan to, but... But... Unfortunately, ICAST have been, has been canceled for this year. ICAST has been canceled according to my sources and the people that were supposed to send me there. It's been, uh, it's been canceled, so unfortunately, no. Uh, ICAST is not happening this year. It's because of the coronavirus. So that really sucks. What's up, Robert? So, uh, yeah, I was looking forward to ICAST, man, because that's where I meet a bunch of other YouTubers and people in the industry and look at the new products. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool event that, uh, that if you really love the fish, hopefully one day you'll be able to experience. ICAST is pretty cool. Man, there's, there's tons of mullet out here. Big ones, not the small guys, the big ones. And I can see them swimming on the top of the surface. 
some little bitty bait fish jumping right here. Man, where the heck is the freaking redfish? I think maybe my bait might be too big. Might be that time of day where they're just targeting small little baits. I'm using that 1 8 ounce trout thumper, which is about four inches long. And I would love to catch a shark right now. That'd be a fight. Use cut bait. Yeah, man, I know I should, but I really don't like messing with cut bait. It just really makes my hands smell bad. You know what I mean? And I have to deal with all my camera equipment and battery changes and stuff like that. It's just like, ugh, not really liking cut bait. But cut bait is a very effective way of catching fish, no doubt. Uh, you can catch some nice fish sometimes, but you also catch the hard heads. <laughs> Yeah, the water's beautiful, man. The wet, the uh, the winds are pretty calm. Uh, hopefully, you guys are not hearing too much wind noise. The winds are absolutely pretty calm. I think like seven miles per hour from the south. And yeah, it's a nice day to be on the water. The only thing missing right now is some beer. I wish I brought some beer. Oh well, I keep forgetting, man. I'm always like in a rush in the morning time, and I always forget the essential things. That's that's me for you. Man, I really hope I can catch a fish, man. Seriously, this I want to show you guys that there's fish out here that are willing to bite my lure. If I was using live shrimp, I'd have more of a chance. But as I said, my buddy over there that's a few hundred yards out, he's using all the live shrimp. So I'll let him use it so he can catch his fish and take home to his wife. And I would use a gulp, but my stupid spinning reel is all messed up with the uh, twisted line. So it's got it all, it won't even cast anymore. <laughs> I need to fix that when I get home. Tie a clickbait. I would, but uh, don't tell bugs, but I left it at home in my tackle box. Gosh, I was in a rush this morning. I woke up kind of late and I was like, oh shoot, I'm gonna be late. And I forgot to bring some lures. And therefore the clickbait is not here. That's why you don't see me. If I had the clickbait with me, I'd be using it, trust me. My favorite type of braid is um, Power Pro. I like Power Pro. I've uh, you've been using it for many years. Uh, really don't have much problem. Sometimes I have the line twists with the spinning reel, but so far Power Pro has been pretty good for me. Um, can't really complain too much and the waiters that were just here they are leaving right now the bite has died down they stopped catching catfish too a throw croaker quick and easy man I would throw croaker but unfortunately they were sold out they're sold out of croaker I guess it's a time of year where people are targeting the big trouts using croaker nope not me I'd rather use top water <laughs> top water is a pretty damn good lure to use uh, for big trout um, I'm, that's the truth man what bait caster do you use for these smaller bugs um, you know there's not really a specific brand uh, I am starting to use more Daiwa to be honest with you I like I, I've, been, I've been really liking the dye reel dye, the new Daiwa reels lately um, I've been catching pretty good fish on the Daiwa reel. Uh, I've ordered a new uh, BFS Daiwa from Japan. Uh, I'm going to be using that primarily to flick the small bugs or the small lures, the small ultralight tackle. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. I'll put a review up soon uh, when that comes in, but I'm pretty excited. But I like to use, to be honest with you, the best, the best reels, in my opinion, to be flicking ultralight stuff, like the really light, light stuff. Unfortunately, you have to get from Japan, from the JDM market, because those guys across the seas, man, those Japanese, they know how to design BFS reels, which are designed primarily for the really small, small lures. So 
<laughs> Fishing with croakers should be outlaw. <laughs> Ever thought about monster gar fishing? I have. Um, I have. I have thought about monster gar fishing, but just don't really know how to monster gar fish. I've never done it before. I mean, I've caught gar on accident, but uh, other than that, I've never really targeted him. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, something that if I if I if I choose to do in the future, I got I have to research on how to do it and what's the proper way to do it. I know that I gotta use like 4x treble hooks that are like super super stout that don't break and they're super sharp. And something like cut mullet, stinky mullet or something works. I don't know. Let's turn back around from this island. We are drifting back into it. What's up? Welcome. Fish guy come through for Nick. <laughs> I know, man, right? But yeah, um, I like throwing ultralight stuff, but um, the Japanese, man, they've, they've been doing it for decades. I wouldn't say decades, but they've been doing it for many, 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 many years, making specific reels for these smaller tackle that we know overseas as BFS, which is bait finesse system. Um, but yeah. Anyways, hopefully I can catch a fish. Maybe I can snag this mullet here. Let me try to snag this mullet. Oh man, I missed him. <laughs> it's a mullet. All right, we've been going on 37 minutes strong. We'll go up to 45 minutes and then we'll call it quits. Is there any other question, guys, that you want to ask me? Go ahead and ask now or leave a comment. I apologize. Sometimes I just don't get these comments because it's so bright out here. And I don't see it. Wishing I was fishing out for trout right now. How's the water? The water is good, man. The weather, to, the uh, the wind temps are good. Uh, right now it's a slack tide. So from my understanding, trout really don't feed unless there's a, an active tide, a, a specific increase or decrease in tide. Uh, right now it's 84.3 degree water surface temp. It's about 80, what, 86 degrees out here. I think a seven mile per hour south wind. So it's, it's really nice, man. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day to be fishing. And the fish were active, believe it or not, even though we had a full moon last night. Usually I when I fish after full moons, it's bad luck, man. I never, never have a good day. But today I had a good day. Uh, I don't know what happened, man. I must have made someone happy. <laughs> All right, here comes a boater. I better get out of the way because boaters always have the right of way. Do I ever do any shore fishing? Yes, I'm assuming you mean bank fishing. Yes, I do. But um, here's my dilemma about bank fishing. There's nothing wrong with bank fishing per se, but as a YouTuber, okay, as a YouTuber that has only X amount of days to fish during the week, which is either one or two, um, if I bank fish, my chances of develop, developing a video really goes down the drain because as you guys know, uh, most of you guys know, when you bank fish, there's no guarantee you're gonna catch a fish. Now there's no guarantee when you kayak fish either, but with a kayak fish, I, I mean, with a, kayak, with a kayak, I have a better chance of catching a fish because I am constantly moving towards the areas that they might be hiding. So with that in mind, that is why you see me doing mostly kayak fishing because of me trying to keep up with uploading videos for you guys to watch. And um, like I said, if I, if I posted a bunch of videos where I don't catch fish, I mean, maybe one or two are cool. I mean, shows that I'm average just like you guys. But at the same time, if I keep doing that constantly, 
no one's going to watch, man. I hate to say it. No, I'm not going to attract any new viewers or subscribers. I'm not going to grow. So that's why bank fishing is you know, something I really don't do much. And that applies to weight fishing. Yes, weight fishing, you're in a better position than just your plain old bank fisherman right off the bank because you actually go out a little further and perhaps maybe you'll be able to run into a school or run into a structure that can be holding fish. Um, but then at the same time, wade fishing, just like bank fishing, there's a highly good chance that you will get skunked. I hate to say it. I mean, maybe, it, maybe it's just me, but you know, I, I fail to see how bank fishing and weight fishing would develop a, a fishing content video with fish being caught every single time. Dude, does that make any sense? Now with a kayak, with a kayak, yes, I do get skunked too. It happens. But at the same time, once again, when I am kayak fishing, I am giving myself a better chance to put myself where the fish are at because I'm able to go out, you know, towards that structure, go out towards a far marsh or a drop off or a channel. Uh, whereas I can't do that while I'm bank fishing or weight fishing. So hopefully that answers your question. I mean, I have nothing against weight fishing or bank fishing. I absolutely love it too. It's, it's really chill. Um, but I just, you know, in order for me to grow on YouTube and keep producing videos, I just, I have to use a kayak, man. It's just, just the way it is. Have I had any notable encounters with a game warden? Oh yeah, I have before. One time actually. And that was, uh, what's her name? Jennifer Polzowski, Polanski from Lone... Man, I hope I'm not butchering her name, but Lone Star Law. I met her at Seawolf Park. She pulled up next to me and she started small talking to me. She was like, hey, you leaving so soon? Because I didn't catch anything. I was way fishing. Okay? I didn't catch anything. And I was like, yeah, I didn't catch it. And then uh, when, she, when she fully rolled down her windows, I noticed it was her. I was like, hey, what's up? And I shook her hand. She had the whole camera crew with her. So there was like four camera guys, one in the back seat. No, three, I'm sorry, three camera guys, one in the back seat, two, one in the front seat, two in the back. And the one in the front seat had the big camera like zoomed out. I could see a lens zoom right in front of me. So it was kind of, I was, I don't know. It was a cool experience, man. Cool story, bro. But I got to meet her. She's pretty cool. She's really nice. And uh, yeah, she looks just like what you see on TV, if that makes any sense. But other than that, no, I have never encountered a game warden. Um, and if I ever do, man, there's nothing for me to hide, man. I got all my licenses all up to date. Usually I'm mostly catch and release. If I do catch a fish, I, you know, I'm 100% compliant with the law. And I encourage my viewers to follow the law, cons uh, conservate, catch and release. If you guys, um, you know, just, just fish for the sport. I mean, I try to push... I don't, I don't necessarily say it in those words, but I kind of push that subtle message through my videos. I mean, sometimes I'll keep a fish to do a catch and cook, but most of the time I'm catch and release. And, you know, I kind of encourage everyone to do the same to preserve our population. But anyways, I am rambling. Sorry about that. All right, we got one more minute. One more minute, guys, before I am going to call it quits at 45 minutes. Is there anything else, guys, you want to talk about real fast for one minute? We had 80 people in here, man. That's awesome. 80 people that are not working. Conservate, LOL, you mean conserve. Yeah, you know, my English is not good. But you know what I mean. Ever had catfish soup? No, I have not. I've never had, I don't really like, to be honest, I don't really like eating catfish. I don't really like eating bottom feeders. I don't know, it's just... I don't know, just the stuff that's on the bottom. Kind of grosses me out. But, um, you know, eat to each his own. If they like catfish, you like catfish. It was, it was, I thought it was cool to pump into you at Bucky's. Not sure what that means. I think you meant run into me. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, you know, I'm here in Galveston, Houston area. You've ever seen me at a gas station or a um, anywhere, tackle store, whatever, man. Don't be afraid to 
come up and say what's up man small talk you know i i i'm I probably stuck up or anything like that what well, at least i don't think i am um i you know if you take the time out to come say what's up i'll take the time out to say what's up too so all right guys that's gonna be it man we're at 45 minutes thank you so much for watching maybe one day we will catch a fish on a live stream it will happen i, I feel it in my bones but um not today unfortunately because of my line twist in my spinning rod but anyways guys i'll see you guys on the next one all right take it easy